Hey there friends and welcome to episode 15 of the Tutorial Sect. I'm Icon and today I want to explore the world with you guys. Well, we have already started lately with exploring the areas around the ruins of the Taiyi Sect, but as of today I want to prepare my cultivators to fight with the big beasts out there and therefore this episode will be focused around adventuring in the map on the maps themselves so i mean the adventure mode has a lot of a lot in store for it but today we want to enter as many maps as possible and i will also feature the methods of how to get there and how to pull it off successfully a few things have already been mentioned in the previous episodes so let's get right started my personal favorite for that is always to roll with a grand chariot cultivator they have such good skills for fighting in general and they also they also can bring up quite a good punch early on even without too many artifacts but to do so we need more experience so let's adventure over to mount south and see what we can grab experience wise so today's episode will also be featuring a lot of uh, little things how to how to grow stronger with your people and well, like i mentioned before in the previous episode it's going to be nearly impossible for me to just focus onto a single topic per episode because this game is just too 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 wide it's we're going to, to continue last episode's economics uh, topic a wee bit when these fields get completed. And we also will talk a wee bit more about crafting. So stuff is evolving and that's wonderful. Sadly, what's not so wonderful is that we have to wait for the breakthroughs of our other cultivators. And I honestly don't really want to go for other... Um, for other cultivators as of yet due to simple reasons that are well it wouldn't be beneficial right now i don't want to train my people in the basic laws and to acquire advanced laws we need to do something else first so about while we're talking about something else first i'm going to give bangju one piece of talisman paper and send her over to to the Sky Dome Palace people. As you see here, we can't enter this place. We should definitely change that. So we, I, I, I recently learned that you can gift them whatever you want. Your gift doesn't really matter, but you can also trade them because I, I gave them always the Spirit Stone before, but it actually is a little bit misleading. It can be everything, even a pile of poop. All right, we're going to trade in Axis now, and here we're going to send Bangju over there, not to adventure, but to camp. It's going to be a very long trip for her, but I don't care about that. She's not really uh, going to be missed here. Bangju is waiting for her breakthrough time in the summer, and right now we're in the middle of the winter, so she can have a good trip, and nobody will mind it too much. All right. Hellion now, we want to equip her for adventuring. And to do so... Wait a sec, she hasn't learned the records of the perfected warrior yet? To do so, she needs a proper artifact. The thing with metal cultivators is, ideally, they would want a water artifact. But since these are so friggin' hard to come by, I really like to use a earthen weapon, which I enchant. So we're going to craft something out of that brownstone blade. 2,000 chi necessary, no biggie. 90% success chance, here we go. Keep in mind that the element of the, of the artifact is not influencing its, its fighting power or anything. Like, a metal cultivator won't hit harder with a, with a water weapon, but what the metal cultivator will do is he will use his chi more efficiently like every weapon is being charged with amount of with a certain amount of chi like this piece of wood here is charged with one with 800 you know, units of chi and if it has the proper element you use less than one point per point of chi you put into your artifact and that's why it's good but if we compare the wood with the artifact power of 10 
to the sword with an artifact power of 20, we are well off. So about artifact creation in general, I can only say it behaves roughly like that. Every item in this game has a certain bias towards certain stats. Like, uh, hypothetically, this is not a thing, wheat, for example, would have a, uh, in general, a, a high knockback. And weapons, in general, have a high artifact power. And other items have a high uh, um, max chi capacity, and so on and so forth. There's a lot of different uh, things hidden in there, but if you are not sure what you're what you are really looking for, because this is a a really really confusing wall of text after all, I can make it easy for you. There's only two numbers which are really really important. That's artifact power and chi capacity. Maybe chi recovery as well, because that's. Uh, determining how far fast the weapon can be recharged, if I understood that correctly. But at the end of the day, you are mainly interested in, in how hard does the weapon hit and how much power can it charge in one go. Beyond that, these other numbers, and that's something I'm kind of sad about to put it out like, put it down like that, are pretty irrelevant. Sure, you could do something with these stats, but even experienced players agreed with the fact that most of these numbers aren't nearly as important as artifact power, capacity, and recovery. Feel free to correct me at this point. Attack speed is probably also a, a honorable mention. I'm really interested in uh, other opinions here because that's what I know. Anywho, what we now discover is that our battle power has been increased significantly and therefore it's no, going to be no biggie to learn the way, the records of the perfected warrior too. But we're not going to learn it out of here because you see 70, 37k costs here and if we put it here, you can also just uh, click Artifact Mastery, by the way. We will get this for a nice 25% discount, which I like. So sadly, we don't have enough XP to learn more skills. But, well, let's see. Hellion is then on a battle power of 125. This is not too glorious, but not too shabby either. What you can also do is invest your inspiration into Artifact Mastery. Let's give ourselves a couple of points, and this is not going up to be updated to uh, life. You have to put it like that. So now we have a Artifact Battle Power of 135. This should be sufficient for all our needs. Our dog is also now at a... A total amount of thirty of uh, fifty thousand chi, so his tankiness is a lot higher. Oh, and he's also mature. Wonderful. So I have mentioned on the last episode the diet of the dog. We're going to talk about that later down the road. Not now. I want to go adventuring now because Hellion is ready. So let's see. Is she also equipped with a spiritual traveling talisman yes but with a very 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 crappy one we have to change that so we're going to see if we can't put up a new one here in high quality a cheated one this is only possible with the uh i, I think it was the perfect artist or glorious artist great artist mod you find it in the description below. I don't like these mini games too much, therefore I decided to skip them. But you don't need to. Okay, now we have that, we have that, and I think we're ready for liftoff. Are we? Okay, now what I want where I want to go first now is I want to visit these places around Mount Shu. So we're going to send Hellion over to camp. And when you send people to camping, he, uh, just uh, watch their uh, bar here. It depletes until it goes full again. Oh, we found Wyvern Pool. Awesome! That's what I wanted to see. So the dog will not want to eat something now. He should always get to eat something if he, if he wants to. 
Eat food with high priority first, low priority first. So, every simple single food has a, uh... Wait a sec, that wasn't looking like that. Has a certain uh, growth potential, like mushrooms give chi growth, cooked food gives protection, fruit gives intelligence, tubers give spell growth, and meat gives core growth. Core growth, by the way, is uh, just the t general tankiness of the, the animal, the internal core. If I understood it correctly, what people explained to me, the higher the core, it's functioning like armor. Like a high core rating lets you take less damage, but again, this is something where I'm not 100% sure. And you see, the deeper we go down the series, the more often we reach topics where I don't know the full extent of the information myself. Because I never read any guides or deeper spoiler-heavy things, I, I like to explore things and I want the series to be as spoiler-free as possible, too. Because, you know, there's nothing more boring than watching a tutorial series and knowing everything afterwards. So, at Mount Lucian, we have now discovered Wyvern Pool. Wyvern Pool is a very, very special place, which we will explore later. So, Halion, now, as you see here, she has arrived at the spot. We will now enter the map. You know the drill. We know how this works. Never, ever enter a area in a for of a foreign sect if it shows if the floor is still red and you don't have access to it it's the worst thing you can do you will get spanked so hard you won't know what hit you so the first thing i did here was summoning the dog and opening the mini map and here we are looking for monsters and treasures these are the two things we will be always looking for. So if we find a monster, we always send our dog in first. Send the cultivator away to make sure he doesn't uh, get the initial acro. And then send the cultivator in afterwards. And then witness slaughter. So as you see here, this is going a lot faster than the last time. And then we can butcher it. There we go. So we gain Beast Blood and Demon Beast Hide. These are very, very uh, desirable goods in general. But you will be able to find these literally everywhere. So here we go. Entering these caves. And this is uh, a, a part of the game I personally like a lot. These areas might be all hard scripted. And at the end of the day you will know them all. But still, they are a lot of fun to explore. If you don't like the amount of items in any stack, just revisit the place and will be re-rolled. At least that's what I've been told. Never tried it because I take the stacks as they come. So we had some I some igneo copper ore, but what's way way more interesting here is that we first that we ran into a demon. Let's uh, send the dog. We found a a crimson fruit tree, and we can plunder another crimson fruit here. So as you see here, Halion was attacked. We're going to retra retreat her out of the fight. This is really, really important that she is not going to be attacked anymore. So once the demon is in fight with uh, the dog, you can re-engage. This is the, the common way how you fight in this game on maps. And as you see here, the dog is super tanky, really taking damage rather slowly. You can do this for, uh, super easy with that. Okay, so sometimes they drop hot, great uh, larger stacks. As you see here, this is a quadruple stack of beast blood. Pick them up, they're really good. Also, we're going to collect this here. And uh, where, uh, why? So this is not, uh, this should not have happened that the tree here got destroyed. I wonder if I just destroyed a whole story arc with that. So this game sometimes has really crazy bugs. I can't put it into different words, crazy bugs. This could have been one of those. So I just wanted to show you how this tree works, but sadly I can't. 
there's a certain chance that this tree won't be reappearing ever again. That's why I highly recommend you to save when before you enter these places. Just do it. You will be uh, you will be grateful for that afterwards. So I'm going to discard the demon beast hide here, even if it's a large stack, because I want to grab as much Ignio copper ore as I can here. As you see, this adventure yielded us a whopping amount of 300 Ignio copper ore. We took a much much longer time gathering that stuff via adventures going back and forth there. So that's why these uh, adventures are so good. All right. So if you are asking what to do, asking yourself what you should do with all that poop, just wanted to mention that, you can also put up fertile soil. Fertile soil is just a uh, powered up version of regular soil. And it is created by putting crap on the floor and massaging it in. You don't believe me? Look at these people. Here, gently, slowly. This is how a soil is made fertile. Anywho, Helene is now back home and we earned a really neat and nice amount of Ignokop ore. We will keep that for later. So from here on, we will now go on a massive raid around the world because that's the point where you should just visit every single friggin' forsaken place and do it. You urinate in the herb gardens, of course you do. It's really important to let him do that because that's just free growth. Don't say no to free growth. Alright. Beautiful. And uh, we are not done here. And as you see, over the time, you will grow more and more busy, and there's more and more to do all the time. That's what I really like. So, Purple Cloud Temple. By the way, sometimes this uh, marker here is not at 100%, but you already found all the areas of that uh, zone already. It's really, really de uh, hidden evil i can't put it into different words but you either know that you can't find anything more there or you don't and you're just hanging around there for nothing speaking about hanging around there for nothing Wangju was already camping long enough here to trigger an event so that means it's time to enter these uh, this place so we're going to enter now for the first time a different sects I don't know how it's even called. Dojo? Pagoda? Whatever. Their, their, their sect main building. So, keep in mind that you are a guest here, so you should behave like that. This These maps, weirdly enough, have decomposed bodies and stuff like your map has. And you can also loot them, but I there's no, no problem with that. And you can basically loot everything here. As long as nobody is watching. Seriously, that's how it works. So what we're looking for is a person called Heiji Dao. That's the first person we're looking for. And that's the whole reason why I went to Skydome Palace. Heiji Dao is a person living at Skydome Palace. And it's a pretty cool person in general. At least if you run the um, one-click favor mod like I do. Because what I'm doing here now is only will only work if the favor here is maxed out. Heiji Dao is a person, she loves talisman paper. And if you gift her talisman paper, she will be very grateful and give you the primordial symbols law as a gift in return. Now, the next thing you do is you pick up that scroll before you leave it behind, because this is an entirely new law for your sect. This is also the sect uh, the law of talisman creation. Therefore, we have now access to the most uh, powerful talismans in game. But more about that later. So now I want to show you the rest of the palace here. So whenever you visit a different sect, there's two cool things. First off, these banners, for example, we can observe them and then build them ourselves back at home. So every sect features their own buildings specific to them 
For example, these sensors here, they are also unique to this sect. We can observe them and unlock them. Wonderful, isn't it? So with spying out other sects, we gain new designs for our home turf. But that's not all we can do. We can also swoop in there and look how it looks inside. So this is how we're supposed to be building, actually. My sects look like savage places since, uh, compared to that. So here's one thing, though. There is always one building which is the wonder of a sect. So you will, re uh, you will know the wonder when you find something where the, the icon says take and the pop-up here says already take this wonder by force. Observe, take. Don't click this button, it's a trap. You will get swarmed by people that are way beyond your power and they will spank you to death. Here, give me, let me give you an example. This is a Skydome Palace Elder, a primordial spirit with a mere amount of 56,000 uh, points of artifact battle power and 12 million points of chi. And that's for just one of these people. And, you know, they won't come one by one. They will come as in a formation. We don't know what formations are as of yet, and that's okay. So, formations are, in short, a way of taking your cultivators and turning them into a kind of a transformer battle platform. Okay, so 52k, well, 31k, you get the idea. These guys are way out of your league. But there's a fun thing in general. Stealing from these sects is absolutely deadly, but as long as there's nobody to, to witness the theft, there will be no uh, punishment for that, so you can play like that if you want to, but don't tell me I didn't warn you. So, yeah, and that's what you can do at other sects. You can ogle at insanely powerful items if you want to. Well, I don't know. Here, Phoenix Sword Formation. It's actually a formation blueprint here. So these sects are also meant to be overpowered at the end of the day. If you want to that's one optional ending of the game to commit a worldwide sectocide it's not easy as far as i heard it's it's easier to end the game and by finding out who destroyed tai and why if you want to know well i can't tell you you have to watch other people's videos for that okay we've uh, spent enough time here i'm going to send bangju back home it's only important that we have the primordial symbols law in our pocket because it would be a bloody shame to leave it behind. Alright, so Bangju is now taking the long way home, and meanwhile Hellion is waiting at a gem spring cave. So it's kind of hard to, to keep track about which places you've been already to and which you were not, so well. That's why I always do it uh, cluster by cluster. So basically now I will be scouting out all the areas of that around that one sect. And then I will take another area and so on and so forth. Because everything else is uh, just too much for me. So sometimes these narrow corridors are, really, are a wee bit uh, horrible to navigate. And there's sadly nothing you can do against, you can do against that. Also, the game somehow doesn't uh, remember which kind of uh, combat the dog had to take before, and you always have to put them back on, on kill every single time. Okay, now we're going to take down the frog. Always butcher these beasts before you uh, leave, because their bodies will decompose otherwise. Um... Picking up beast blood always preferably out of a simple reason. First, you needed to create these um, elemental bars. Second, you also can sell that stuff for a really neat and nice amount of money. And third off, it is a alchemical reagent too. So beast blood is just valuable. And it would be a shame not to use it. 
All right, there's a frog demon. And as you see here, to the feet, uh, at the feet of the frog demon is another earth flux. So if you happen to have no fire cultivator able to pluck these earth fluxes for you, you just need to kill a demon and the price is still yours. So I, I always recommend a power rating of over at least 100 for artifacts, mainly because it speeds up the fight. But, um, well, it really com it really relies more on your dog than on your on your uh, actual cultivator because your dog can be so tanky that he stops taking damage from these guys uh, altogether and once you reach that breakpoint it doesn't matter if you hit with one uh, for one point of artifact battle power or 1000 yo hellion you're you're supposed to run away Alright, Colossal 2. Bears are among the most powerful demons, and these are, well, as you see here, takes a while. That's also why I configured my button here on the highest unto the highest available speed, because everything else is just painful. Alright, Colossal 2 is gone. I, I don't uh, want to... Well, okay. Okay, I'm going to butcher him, but we're actually looking for other treasures here. At some point your inventory is full, and if you want to really get out more loot than that, just send another cultivator on these adventures. You are not you you don't need to send only one person. You can't send more people than one. Oh yeah, here we have a samsara pill. This is pretty valuable. It will give you a big boost of cultivation, but only after the Golden Core phase. With Samsara Pilts, you can do two things. Either you boost the development of one of your cultivators after the Golden Core, or you sell it for a crap ton of money. These things can be traded for, if I remember correctly, around 1,000 or 1,500 Spirit Stones each. So this is why adventuring on these maps is so dang lucra lucrative because the items you find here sometimes are just worth a crap ton of money. And, well, sure, you can farm all that in your sector as well. No problem. But this is a way easier and faster way to get the job done. So, here we go. These monsters are, by the way, the same monsters your Yao guy turn into if they fail Heavenly Tribulation. All right, let's keep butchering. You can also feed those monsters uh, all manner of different medicines after you've beaten them. And uh, there's, uh, well, a lot of funny things that you can do. From enslaving them uh, uh, to feeding them several th different things they interact with. While they are dying, you can basically even uh, resurrect them and use them as puppets. Lots of things are possible. Most of them are completely unnecessary. So, all right. So we discovered everything this uh, place had in store for us. Nope, there's not one more corridor. Here, it is kind of nasty that you can really easily miss a spot. And this uh, pack of Jade Essence is really, really a, a good find. Because Jade Essence is not only a Earth Chi Gatherer, it's also quite valuable. You can sell this uh, stack for quite some good penny. Okay, let's get back home. We have some beast blood, jade, jade essence, and an earth flux. So, well, this kind of adventuring is very, very lucrative. Like I said, there is a fire. Ah, these fools! They placed the crimson fruit on in the air in the storage here again. So, here we go. Somebody take that Crimson Fruit away! Theory items like the Crimson Fruit really need to be taken care of. Or they too, do too much damage. Yo guys, I said, must be taken care of. Thanks. So... Alright. So these two Crimson Fruits together are setting things on fire. If that happens to you and you're annoyed about that, just put a few offcuts below those uh, fields. These uh, offcuts can't burn, 
and are usually all you need to do to stop that from happening. Alrighty, so that was today's episode, and I think you now know everything necessary to know to plunder the rest of the world. I won't be plundering the rest of the world in this series too much, because, you know, it would be just to... We would be spending several episodes just raiding these places. And by now, I think you guys got the idea. I will be going for a couple of places, though, which are necessary for finding things and necessary to discover their secrets. Like, in the next episode, we're in pool. We will go there, for sure. But that's another day's uh, story. Okay. Thank you guys so much for watching. We're going to remove these uh, blueprints here and also to leave like that and yeah drop your comments down below leave a thumbs up on that video and of course check out the channel daily content brought up there and if you like it just leave a subscribe turn on the bell and you won't miss anything in the future thank you yet again for all the really wonderful support and friendly words it really means a lot to me and this series is a lot more fun than i originally anticipated i'm very grateful for that see you guys next time Bye bye